So let's turn this into this. What is up you guys, I hope you are doing well. Today we're color grading in Premiere Pro to achieve a cinematic look. Now in order to do that, we need to go past three main steps. The first one is correction of exposure, then white balancing, and finally color grading. Now in this video, we're not gonna color grade with LUTs, so it's gonna be a full on Premiere Pro tutorial. And we're gonna go for a teal and orange look, a typical look or typical style that we see in all superhero movies or blockbuster movies like Superman, like Joker, which can see it in Batman and Endgame. All those movies have a teal and orange look to it. So we're gonna achieve that in Premiere Pro without using any LUTs. And in order to correctly expose and correctly white balance an image, we're gonna use the Lumetri scopes, which at first glance seem a bit difficult and a bit complex to understand, but truly they're quite simple, guys. So let's jump into Premiere Pro and start editing. Okay, guys, once in Premiere Pro, we open up a new project. And in this case, I've selected the color workspace. So to the right, we have the Lumetri color tab. Here we can do all the color grading and adjustments. Then we have the timeline. And over here, I've gone ahead and imported all the clips that I'm gonna use. You can do this by simply dragging it or by pressing Ctrl I on your keyboard. Okay, to start off with, I'm gonna drag a clip onto the timeline. We can double click it. And with I on our keyboard, we can select an endpoint where the clip will start. And with O, we can select an out point. So I'm gonna, I'm happy with that. We can drag both audio and video by dragging the image or you can just drag the video with this button or the audio with this other. So I'm just going to drag the video. Okay, now we have our first clip on our timeline. Now, now the program has created a sequence for us. I'm going to click the sequence. I'm going to go down to sequence, sequence settings. Here I'm going to change the time base. Now this largely depends on the country that you live in. For example, in Europe, they use a 30 frames per second time base for the TV and that's what they're accustomed to. Here in North America and Mexico, Canada and United States, we use a 24 frames per second time base. So I'm going to select this one. Then I'm just going to change the frame size. Now this will change the aspect ratio of the image. So in this case, this is a 16 by nine. I'm going to change this value to 803. Now what I've just done is change the proportion of the video to a 21 by nine aspect ratio. Now the aspect ratio of 21 by nine is what we're accustomed to see in the cinema. We can see movies like the Tarantino series or even the Lord of the Rings movies. All of those are very elongated proportions and that's how basically we can get the cinematic black bars. Now be sure to check mark maximum bit rate and maximum render quality and hit OK. Now, as we can see, the program has converted the image into a 21 by nine aspect ratio. That means that when you play back this video in a laptop or a cell phone that has a 16 by nine aspect ratio, the program will automatically display this 21 by nine aspect ratio with black bars on top and on the bottom. So that's the correct way to create black bars. Now, the incorrect way we all know it would be to add a PNG file all on top of our footage that will hard bake the black bars into the video. But in that case, you're not making the video a 21 by nine or giving it black bars. You're basically adding some black over your image. And if the video is reproduced in a lower quality, those black bars will be pixelated and will lose quality. So the correct way to do it is by adjusting the sequence settings. Now let's talk a little bit about the footage that I took. Now this is taken in my A6500. It's taken in a flat picture profile in a Cine 4 with the saturation decreased. So that means the image has a flat picture profile. And I've done this because I don't have a camera that shoots raw. Maybe you have a 1DX Mark III or a cinema camera that shoots raw and your dynamic range is very big. But in the absence of raw video, what we do is make the image a lot more flat so we can pull out a lot of more information from the highlights and from the shadows. Now these clips are shot in 120 frames per second at 1080p. So we have the ability to make them five times slow motion. Now in order to make the clip five times slower, what we're gonna do is right click modify interpret footage and up here in assume frame rate we're going to change it to the value of our timeline which is 24 frames per second as we can see the duration has expanded and we hit ok and now the video is in slow motion so i'm going to go ahead and drag the clips into our timeline okay now i'm done with it now in order to get to the color grading first we need to expose correctly the clips to make sure all of them are correctly exposed or exposed in a similar manner and we want to get the white balancing right now, the first thing that we're gonna do is correct the exposure. Now, to correct the exposure, we need Lumetri Scopes. Now, if you don't see the Lumetri Scopes tab, go to Window and select Lumetri Scopes. 
and in this case what we're gonna do is select the wrench right here and select the waveform type to Luma and deselect the parade RGB. Now what we are seeing here is a graphical representation of the image that we have over here. So if we play it, we can see that it moves with the clip itself. Now it is a graphical representation so we can basically pinpoint out the silhouette of the subject right here and the illumination corresponds to the image. Now what we don't want to see in the Lumetri scopes in Luma particularly is any of these points reaching the zero or the 100. When it reaches the 100, that means that we're losing information in the whites and the image is overexposed. And when it reaches the zero, it means it's underexposed and we're losing information in the blacks. So what we want is an image around the tens and the nineties to be correctly exposed. Now, in this case, we can see that this image in particular has some overexposed areas all the way down here in the sky so we have to change that and we change it with the basic corrections we can change it with the blacks the white the shadows and the highlights now highlights and whites aren't the same neither are shadows and blacks so we're going to drag in this image of a grayscale so i can show you what each color does now the blacks in the scopes are represented in the zero and the whites well it should be pure white it should be at 100. now the blacks control the lower end or the darkest parts of our image so if we move the blacks up up, we can see that the last points or the darkest points of our image move up and if we move the shadows we can see that the blacks or the darkest part of the image doesn't move instead the mid blacks or the mid tones in the blacks are the ones that move now the whites and highlights are quite the opposite while the whites control the the brightest areas of our image the highlights control the mid tones of the whites so if we move them up we can see that the mid tones move up so it's important to notice the difference between blacks and shadows and highlights and whites. They don't control the same things. Well, having said that, let's move on to the exposure, guys. So we can delete this. Okay, so let's start off with this one, which is a bit overexposed. And what we want to do is pull down the whites so they're around the 90s. So the whites, I'm going to drag them down just around there. It's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to drag the blacks and the shadows down all the way to the 10 so that it acquires a bit more contrast. So I'm just going to pull down a bit of the whites just around there. And it's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to do the same with the other clips. And we want it to be matching the others. So what we're going to do is go all the way down to color wheels and match and select comparison view. Now in comparison view, we can see here the two clips comparing and we can also see the comparing of the Lumetri scopes. So what we want to do is match the shadows and the highlights of this clip with the other. So while you select the new clip, you're going to go up to basic correction. And in this case, I'm going to pull up the whites. So they're around the 90s. More so around there. And as we can see, the whites in the image now correspond to the whites of this other one. Then I'm going to pull down the blacks so they reach the 10%. Quite around there and it's looking pretty good now these images are exposed in a similar way so in this case this image doesn't need much the blacks just need to be pulled down just a bit around there just like that and it's looking pretty good and in this one we can see that the image is a lot more compact and we don't have any pure white or whitest parts that's because we don't have any sky but still i'm gonna move just a little bit up the blacks around 10 percent just around there i'm, I'm gonna stretch it just a bit pulling up the shadows and the highlights around there. And as we can see, the image is more stretched out. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So next up, we're gonna add some saturation to compensate a bit of the flat picture profile that I used. So I'm gonna add a 130%. Now we can switch off the comparison view as well. So that's exposure correction and contrast. Next up, white balancing. So maybe at the time that you're shooting one part of the clip or one part of the video, it's cloudy and in the other, now it's sunny. So the colors change. So in order to achieve a correct white balance, what we want to do is move the temperature and tint sliders. Now, in this case, I'm going to use the Lumetri scopes, but I'm going to change it to the Parade RGB. Deselect the waveform. And in the waveform, I'm going to change it to RGB. Now what we have is three instances of the same image. We can see the RGB red, green and blue colors that compose the image. Now in this case, what we don't want to see is one color over the other. Now if we move the temperature up, we can see that the reds go up and the blues go down. If the image is too blue, contrary, the blues go up. So what we want is an image well balanced with all these three at around the same height. Now in order to achieve that, we can move the sliders of the tint and the temperature or we can use the white balance selector. Now this tool is pretty nice and makes our job quite easy. We can select it and we can select any part of the image that we know that it's pure white 
it could be the sneakers, it could be headphones, it could be your cell phone, or in this case the fog, we, I know the fog is pure white, so we can select it and automatically the program compensates the white balance so the image has pure white. Now we can do this in the rest of the clips, just around there, I'm going to select this whitest part of my hand, just around there, and as we can see there is a lot more movement now. Now let's do this one manually, we can see that the blues are a bit higher, so in this case I'm going to pull up just a bit the temperature, more around there. Now all of these are at the same height and I'm pretty happy with that. And finally in this one, I think this one is correctly exposed and correctly white balanced. So I'm going to select the reflection on the tin can and yeah, there's no movement. This image is correctly white balanced. So white balancing is important guys because now we're going to add some color and we need the colors to perform the same way in each of the clips. Okay, now let's move on to color grading. We're going to go down to project, add a new item and we're going to add an adjustment layer. Hit OK and we're going to drag it on top of all our clips and expand it. So guys, just a quick pause. If you're liking the video, can you please give it a like and consider subscribing to help me out and let's get back into it. Now it's time to give this video an orange and teal look. Now I've added an adjustment layer because all these clips are now exposed and white balanced the same way. So we can just add a color on top of them and apply it to all of them. The adjustment layer works like a Photoshop layer. Everything that's below it will be affected by it. Okay, so let's select it and go all the way down to secondary color. Now the teal and orange look is pretty famous due to the fact that it uses two colors that are opposite in the color wheel. We can see the oranges over here and in the immediate opposite side, we can see the teals. It's a combination of colors that we see in sunsets at the sea, for example, which is a very calming sight. And as the sea is blue and on top of it, the sky is orange in the sunset. So it's a pretty nice sight. And theoretically, it's a pretty aesthetic combination. Now let's go down to the first clip where we have a subject. So what we're going to do is add some teal to the shadows and to the midtones. Meanwhile, we want the skin tones to remain pure. We don't want the skin to change to blue or to yellow or to any other color. So in this case, what we're going to do is select the skin tones with the selector tool. We're going to click on this little button and now we can see what we've selected. We're going to move these sliders, the hue, the saturation and the luminance slider to select every part of the skin of the subject. So once you're happy with your selection, you're going to add some denoise and some blur just to make the selection a lot, a lot more softer. And we're going to select in this button to invert it. And now we've selected everything but the skin tones of the subject. Now we'll go down to the main color wheel and here we're going to add the teal color to everything. So let's pull the center tone all the way to a teal color. Remember not to overdo it, just around there, I'm happy with that. And as we can see, everything has acquired this teal color. Okay, so one thing I don't like is that the blacks are bluish. We don't want every single black or the pure blacks to be blue. We will just want the mid-tones. So in this case particularly, we can see that the jacket and everything is blue. So in order to erase that, we're going to add another instance of Lumetri to this adjustment layer. So we're going to go down to effects. Again, if you don't see effects, you can go to window and select effect and the tablet or the pad will appear. So here we're going to type in Lumetri color and we're going to drag it on top of our layer. Okay, so we've added another layer in the adjustment layer. So in this case, we're going to erase all the blues in the shadows and the midtones. So for that, we're going to go down to curves. And we're going to go all the way down to the Luma versus Sat curve. Now this is quite easy to explain. Up we have more saturation, down we have less. And here we have the darkest areas of our image and all the way up here, the brightest. So we want to desaturate the darkest areas. So in this case, I'm going to set a point right around here and another. And I'm going to drag the darkest part part of the image all the way to the desaturated part. As we can see, the blacks are now desaturated. Now I'm going to drag this one as well a bit down. Now we can see that the jacket and the backpack and the shadows aren't blue anymore. So we can click this point to see what we've done. And there it is. Everything is blue. Now it's a bit now it's a bit desaturated. Now we've just desaturated the blacks and a bit of the midtones, but we can see that the teal color hasn't disappeared completely. And if we hide it, we can see that the image is a lot more warmer. And if we add it, we can see all the teal come in. Okay, so another thing that I'm not liking is the saturation on the face of the subject. He just climbed up the mountain, so he's a bit red. So I'm going to go to the hue versus hat curve and select the skin tones. Now three points have appeared with the skin tone, so I'm going to desaturate the middle one not to the extreme, otherwise our subject will be black and white. Instead, I'm just going to desaturate just a little bit around there. Okay, so next up, let's add a little bit more color. So in the creative tab, you can add a look with a lot. Maybe you downloaded one, you bought one, or you can use 
any of the samples that Premiere Pro has over here. In this case, I'm not going to do anything like that. But if you do add one, you can move the intensity of the LUT over here. In this case, I'm going to go down to color wheels. And here we can assign a color to the shadows, to the midtones, and to the highlights. So in this case, I'm going to move a bit of the highlights towards the oranges, just around there. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the colors now. But I still feel the image doesn't have enough punch. So I'm going to go down to curves. And in the RGB curve, this is the same curve that appears in Lightroom and in Photoshop. I'm going to make an S shape just around here move up the midtones in the highlights and as we can see the image has a lot more punch now. Now if you wanted a faded look with the blacks a bit faded you can move the last point up just around here and as we can see the blacks are now a bit more grayish. I'm not going to go with that look I just want the pure blacks so I'm going to return it to zero. So I'm going to add another effect the unsharp mask to make the image a bit more sharper and that isn't a constant in every video that I make but in this case the 1080p on the APC sensor of the A6500 looks pretty washed up so I'm going to add an unsharp mask. So I'm just going to drag it onto the adjustment layer control effects or effects control and in the unsharp mask I'm just going to up up just going to up the threshold to one the radius to two. I'm sure you can't see the improvement right now but when you export the video the image will be a lot sharper. The only thing that's missing here is the music so you can drag it onto your timeline and you can cut it with C in your keyboard. Remember to make the cuts of the video in accordance to the music so it matches and that's about it guys. So to recap guys the first thing that you want to do is correctly expose each clip in accordance to the others then correct the white balance add some saturation and finally add the style in the color grading. So once we finish with everything, the last thing to do is export. We can control M to export or go to export media. And in this case, what we want to do is set the format to H.264. That's the format I use for YouTube. I can export video and audio, of course. Use maximum render quality, render and maximum bit depth. Then all the way down to bitrate settings. Now for simple videos like talking head videos or tutorials, I always use it at one pass and leave it at 15. That means the program will run the video once, but if it's a more complex video with a lot of color grading uh, like this one, I always use it at two passes and the bit rate and the maximum bit rate around 15. Now, if you have a more jam packed action video, I always recommend to put the target bit rate all the way up, maybe to the 30s or the 25s. But in this case, I'm just gonna leave it at 15. So once everything is done, you hit export and just wait for the program to export the file. So guys, that's it for this video. I know it's a pretty long one, so thanks for sticking with me. And if you have any suggestions, maybe I missed a step or maybe you do things some other way, remember to put it down in the comments down below so we can get some feedback. Remember, I'm still learning just like you guys. So if you did like the video, can you please give it a like? It really makes a difference and consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload the next video. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you and see you in the next one.